And we're going to go through your 10 wickets here, Nathan. Uh, starting off with uh, Tom Blundell in the first innings. It wasn't my best ball, to be honest. It was actually a, a cross seamer. Um, so I actually held the ball cross seam and actually to try and change the shape of the delivery. Some days you don't get the exactly the same way, but in a couple of years' time that will be um, a story I'll tell everyone that's just spun through the gate and hit the top of off. You nutmegged him through the legs. Nutty. Second wicket, Jeet Raval. Yeah, I was pretty pretty happy with that one. Uh, and obviously in the first innings, uh, day two wicket, it was, it's uh, still a pretty nice wicket. There was a little bit of rough there, but yeah, that one was just try and challenge him on the front foot, uh, beat on the inside edge. And a pretty good ball for a left-hander for a right arm off in hit uh, well below the knee roll, which is nice. That was intentional that it was going to be the, the slider one, the, the arm ball that went straight on? Uh, no, that wasn't an arm ball. It was a normal off break. Just didn't spin? Yeah, it's just natural. It's, it held a little bit. Yeah. It held a little bit, but... Uh, Unfortunately, I don't know how well, how, how, or how big it's going to spin or if it's going to spin at all. Um, so I think that's actually a positive. So if I don't know, the batters have got no idea. That's right. Here we go. Third wicket. This is Will Somerville, your old teammate. Uh, played back to one that he maybe should have played forward. Uh, yeah, I actually played. I think that was my third or fourth ball at Will um, in, a, in a row there. And he, he played a miss, I think, about three times before I adjusted my line slightly and uh, to just to nick the off stump. Not a bad over. You had three players a miss, a wicket, another player a miss, and then you had uh, Neil Wagner bowled. That was a dirty slog. This shot here is probably exact um, reflection on who who's probably bowling the other end. When you, <laughs> I'm very fortunate enough of who who I'm bowling with um, sometimes, and this in this case, I'm pretty sure Starkey at the other end and. Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with that, and obviously Neil hit me for quite a large six um, mm. in Melbourne, so he just tried to replicate that, but it, lucky enough, it just went underneath the bat and hit Kennedy into off stump, but uh, then... Your fifth wicket was yeah. uh, Matt Henry. Now, is this uh, this was stumped. 100% was, was it Was it run out? He didn't try and take a run, so how is it, how is it even a conversation about run out? I'm not saying when, it is. When is he... I'm not saying he, it is. No, all the boys are saying that's run out. So <laughs> when was he trying to take a run before Tim took the bowls off? I'm not saying... Well, exactly. I mean, so that's crease. a beautiful... Just lured him out nicely and very lucky that the ball just bounced up to, um, to Paney there and Paney whipped off the gloves quite quickly. Second innings now and he had Jira Valk beat on the inside edge and he got him on the outside edge. Uh, a beautiful ball and I, I'm pretty sure Matt Wade tells the story. Jeet uh, Ravel... Um, actually walked down to Ross Taylor the ball before and said the ball's just sliding on and it's not really spinning and Matt Wade just re- reminded him that's a pretty dangerous call to uh, say it's not spinning and it was a pretty beautiful ball actually it's a, probably a perfect stock ball for a, for a left hander um, it was beautiful shape you know, yeah then to have a keeper like Tim Payne on Takes the end of it catch, which was yep. a pretty good catch and his second wicket seventh of the match the youngster yeah, I'm pretty sure the ball before that, it ragged a big, a fair way from memory. I hit the rough and it went a fair way and it was inside edge and it just went shy of Matt Wade's right hand. Um, so then um, Glenn Phillips or Steve Smith, um, he tried to hang back a little bit and uh, yet again the ball, natural variation, just slid on and uh, yet again a very faint little nick. I actually didn't hear this nick. But um, Tim Payne and the rest of the crew, they were absolutely adamant that uh, he nicked it. So, he, yet again, a very good decision by Alan Dar. Next up, Colin de Grandholm. Uh Yeah, obviously, Colin played, he played his uh, hand quite a fair bit. He played some big shots there and uh, quite easily could have been out a few times previously. But uh, he hit me for a beautiful shot, shot over covers um, out of the rough for six the ball before. So... Then I thought his beans might be going a little bit and uh, I'd sort of try and slow it up a little bit and give a little bit more air and we had, by having three guys out, had a bit of protection out there. So by having guys out, I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I actually find it actually quite attacking having guys out there to stop people's release. But they're, in my eyes, they're like my third, fourth slip and all my gullies. And he's only playing that shot because he doesn't trust his defence. Then uh, he's big James Patterson, who actually thought he was Buddy Franklin there for a little bit. Big mark, and he's going to take it back and kick it. So it was a very good catch, and all the boys were calling him Pidge because they reminded him of Adelaide right. a couple of years ago, so... And then the last one, BJ Watling just scooping you around the corner to Pat Cummins at um, behind square leg. Yeah, I actually um, brought the whole field up that that ball just to try and keep uh, keep pressure on, so so Starkey could have six balls at at 
um, Neil Wagner at the other end to hopefully wrap the game up. Um, and I you know, just tried to throw it a little bit wider to make him try and hit me through the covers, which would hopefully bring in the bat pad. But I do realise BJ does uh, does sweep as well. So very lucky that Pat Cummins was switched on and was able to take a pretty nice catch.